So you heard of Rapa Nui, the stone statues of Easter Island. The moai have become the trademark of Rapa Nui art and culture. Rapa Nui, also called Easter Island, is an isolated volcanic island in the southern Pacific. The original inhabitants were Polynesians, possibly from the Marquesa Islands, who arrived in two canoes sometime between 300 and 1200 AD. The name Easter Island was given by the first European visitor, the Dutch explorer Ra Jacob Ragomin, who arrived on Easter Sunday, 1722. The third European was Captain James Cook, who visited in 1774. He wrote, We could hardly conceive how the islanders, wholly unacquainted with any mechanical power, could raise such stupendous figures. There were nearly a thousand moai, all carved between 1100 and 1680. Only about a quarter were installed, nearly half are still in the quarry, and the rest are scattered around, presumably on their way to be installed when the work stopped. The Rapa Nui had a Stone Age culture and made extensive use of local volcanic stone and made their tools from obsidian. The size of the Moai increased substantially over the nearly 600 years that they were being carved, which was most likely a competitive thing, just like in Europe they would build bigger and better churches. According to oral history, there was a strong class system. A high chief was supreme ruler over all the other clans and chiefs. The high chief was a direct descendant of the island's legendary founder, Hotu Matua. They created the Moai to represent their ancestors and chieftains. They believed that they had a symbiotic relationship with the dead who would provide them with everything they needed, through, and through offerings, they could provide the dead with a better place in the spirit world. Villages were located on the coast, so the Moai were usually erected facing inland to watch over their descendants and with their backs towards the spirit world in the sea. Rapa Nui legend says that the Moai walked with the help of a priest who had the mana. Recently, a team of around 15 people did successfully walk a statue while it was upright using ropes to rock it from side to side. Moai were often decorated with petroglyphs. Many of the Maui that have been excavated or are still in the quarry show the extensive decoration on their backs. Many of the standing Maui were toppled by the time the Europeans arrived. The common theory is that the Rapa Nui experienced a tremendous social upheaval brought about by a change in their island's ecology. No more trees meant no wood for canoes, no canoes meant no means to fish, and no fish meant starvation. The population had dropped from 15,000 to around 2,000 in just a hundred years. The Moai were put back in place and their platforms rebuilt by archaeologists that they, in the expeditions of the 19th and 20th centuries. The size and complexity of the Moai of the final era of production and the extensive carving are visible and the stone's original color in recent excavations. Ahutangariki has the most Moai with 15. Platforms are called Ahu, and the Moai sit on top of them. At Ahu now now, there are seven Moai that are not facing inland. The, when Hotu Matu arrived, he brought seven different races with him, which became the seven clans of the Rapa Nui. These figures represent the original ancestors from the Marquesas and are gazing out across the ocean to the west, remembering where they came from. Ahu now now is the best preserved Moai with Pukaus. Pukaus are the red hats, which may represent either a traditional top knot or a chieftain's hat. It isn't known how they were put on top of the moai as they were carved into different quarry and moved separately. The Sebastian Inkler Museum houses the first moai eye that was discovered. Until it was found, they did not know that moai had eyes. The female moai is only one of twelve that are known of. This barely touched on the story of the moai. There's so much more to find out.